I stared at the cow, and the cow stared back. I's bloodline was extensive and proud, filled with illustrious heroes and legendary warriors. From the cradle, she dreamed of being Michiko, who held the gates of the still lotus with thirty ninja against a horde of barbarians, or General Aki, six generations back, the master tactician victorious at the Battle of the Crane Road. Their fire was in her veins. She was destined for great things, just like them. Somehow, she doubted any of them started their careers with a lost cow. The cow lowed, flicked an ear, and turned away in search of tender grass shoots. I scowled and hunched further into the cattails. She was dirty, smelly, tired, and at least three days from home. Not for the first time. She wished she hadn't jumped at the chance at her first solo mission. Abruptly she stood, dragging fistfuls of wispy seeds that blew away when she opened her hands. All right, you stupid cow, she grumbled. Let's get this over with. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I will be your Gaming Monk for the evening. So, ninjas. Some may love them, some may hate them, but there are probably three of them standing behind me as I record this. Fortunately, they're not hired by Alphabet, since I'm nowhere near big enough for them to notice. In all seriousness, it amuses me that even with the vast sandbox of potential within the medium of RPGs, there's still a narrative among some that you shouldn't use a certain material as inspiration for your game. Maybe it's because I don't have a default assumed right way to do it. A case in point, when people were roasting the Book of Nine Swords from D&D 3rd Edition for taking inspiration from video games and anime, I merely replied with, um, so? Seriously, sacred cows are overrated, and I'll keep saying that until I lose my voice. Our subject for this week has no interest in sacred cows, wearing its influences from martial arts and ninja anime on its sleeve, and in fact specifically name drops Naruto and Journey to the West. Fans of the show might raise an eyebrow at some motifs in the book, but rest assured, that's intentional. I should note that I'm reviewing the second edition of the game. Now normally, I don't make edition comparisons, but in this case, it's somewhat warranted. See, most times when a new edition is introduced, it just means a refinement to the previous system, or in some cases, a brand new system. Second edition, in this case, is a bit of the latter, and in other ways, a literal sequel. The original game, which was called Wu Xing the Ninja Crusade, you had the various ninja clans forced to band together against an emperor who wanted them all exterminated, which, given that his daughter and concubine were killed by ninja, is understandable if a little extreme. The second edition takes place after the fact, where the emperor has been killed, and the clans have created a new, neutral village for them all. To put it another way, if first edition was Naruto Shippuden, second edition is Boruto. So dropping the Wu Xing in the name and shifting to a new dice system, how does it hold up? Well... Let's find out. At around 240 pages, this is a packed-in read, albeit one that makes every attempt it can to space things where it, it is able to. Much like 1st edition, it's clear that Third Eye Games took inspiration from the storyteller system, especially Exalted. I will state that the art style is significantly more controlled and consistent this time, which goes a long way in creating a unified voice for the game. As if to hammer the point home, the game contains both a glossary and an index. Both are very welcomed alongside the lack of a background texture. Makes things an easier read for a black and white book. Character creation here is a seven step life path, each step granting its own skill bonuses, much like the last game, along with a gift and a trigger. Some of the steps have specific items in a type subset format. We'll be exploring this with Tatsumi Sumi. Now, the first step is called Ocean, the place that all life is born from, and determines the inherent element and temperament to the character. We'll go with Fire, which grants a plus one to Athletics, Fighting, Intimidation, and Perception, as well as plus one to Yang Ki. The second half of this is choosing a temperament from the chosen element, in which case we'll go with Confident. This grants a gift and a trigger. The former is plus one Empathy against Fear, and the latter gains one karma when walking into danger. The second step is Village, where the trade you learn at an early age. We choose one profession and focus, much like the previous step. And we'll go with Warrior and Sellsword in this case, granting a plus one to Fighting, Fortitude, Marksman, and Might. We also gain the focus gift of plus one to Speed when dodging, and the focus trigger of one karma when something we were hired to do plagues us. 
Step three is River, the defining moment of hardship in their past, a hardship that defined their growth. The choice of Tragedy and Affliction here grants a key bonus as well. We'll be going with Tormented Mind and War Weary, granting us a plus one to Fortitude, Knowledge, Stealth, and Empathy, plus one Yin Key, and the appropriate Gift and Trigger, respectively granting us plus one Fighting when battling for one's life, and one Karma gain when memories of the past war overwhelm us. Step four is Forge, the character's role and experience during the last war. This step is split between role and title. We'll go with Foot Soldier and Champion, granting us a plus one Athletics, Discipline, Fighting, and Might. The Gift and Trigger grant here gives us plus one Fortitude against Poisons, and one Karma when our Truth causes conflict. Step five is Mountain, where the character's choice of Ninja Clan manifests. Of the clans available, we'll go with the Virtuous Body Gardeners. This gives us plus one to Crafts, Fighting, Intuition, and Perform, plus one Yang Key, a gift and a trigger that grants us plus two to crafts when painting and or tattooing, and one karma when accepting a mission that one person has refused. This step is the only one that doesn't have a subtype, as it has two in the form of contacts and bonds. We'll be skipping bonds in our example, as it's an at-the-table affair. However, we have two contacts from the clan list, one ally and one rival. We'll go with Sumi Chimaki in the former and Okamura Yuko in the latter. Step six is Temple the personalization of the character. In this step, we have 10 free points to spend on skills and two levels of martial training. We'll start with skills, putting a plus one in fighting, might, perception, and crafts, plus three in speed, and plus two in intuition. If the math sounds odd, that's because a fifth rank in a skill costs two points instead of one. We also gain two specialties, which grant a plus one bonus to specific skill uses. For this, we'll go with swords for fighting and tattooing for crafts. Martial training, the next step in Temple, can be considered akin to feats, and are separated into three categories, with many of the feats having three-tier formats, in a manner of speaking similar to the feat chains in Fantasy Craft. This is split into Martial Styles, Weapon Styles, and the 99 Styles, which compose of things that don't fit the first two categories. We'll go with Tiger Claws and Armor of Blades, both at level 1. The seventh step is Sky where we spend six points on Jutsu, the expression of the key that we've been developing through the previous steps. Now, Jutsu are categorized into general, elemental, and clan-specific. Beyond that, Jutsu costs one point for basic, two points for median, and three points for advanced. Our clan-specific Jutsu is Way of the Inked Skin. We'll be going with Tiger's Claws, Sharpened Blade, Sturdy Fist, and Magnetic Repulsion. The final step concerns derived attributes, which grants us a health of seven, Psyche of 5, Initiative of 9, 1 Dynamic Action, 3 Dynamic Dice, a Strength of 5, and a Movement of 10. I like the character creation setup, as I've always had a soft spot for life path systems, but I could see some people having an issue with it being restrictive. Thankfully, there is an alternative that's straight up point by. The only real issue I have is over the character sheet design itself more than the character design method. The use of boxes for the training bit especially. Now, no way is someone of higher rank only going to have just three martial trainings or three jutsu ways. I appreciate the attempt at a one-page character sheet, but a four-pager couldn't hurt. However, this take on character creation is only the start of the significant changes with this second edition. Now, Ninja Crusade in his first edition used the Dynamic Game System, or DGS, which was a kind of D20 pure. The system was a bit fiddly, but it was a solid work overall. A part of the appeal was how the sandbox of martial arts styles, jutsu, weapons, and so on made every character and encounter distinct. Second edition uses a D10-based die pool called the Chakra System. Taking a page from AMP, a game that I hope to cover in the future, the Chakra System uses a skill-only combo setup instead of the traditional attribute plus skill setup, i.e. you're using two skills instead of an attribute and a skill. D10 pools are formed within the chakra system, and these are success-based. Results of 7 through 9 are success, and 10s count for 2 successes. And of course, no successes with a 1 are considered as critical failures. Those who have played any of the storyteller system games like World of Darkness, Exalted, and Aeon will find themselves right at home here. Either way, the net successes are compared against a difficulty number. Now, An interesting twist is the boost effect, essentially a means to utilize excess successes. So if you beat the difficulty by 3, you may add additional effects or a GM fiat bonus. 
The chakra system arguably has two forms of extra effort, the first one being karma. This is a dice pool that is built through triggers, critical failures, or foregoing the effects of a boost. As for using the dice, they can be spent on bonus dice or narrative rewrites, i.e. cheats. The second extra effort is dynamic actions, which can be used to apply extra effects in combat. A character's rank grants a free set of dynamic actions, with dynamic dice granting extra actions per success when they're rolled. And this is a pool that refreshes each turn in combat. In that regard, referring to dynamic actions as extra effort isn't entirely fair. The game's description is improvisation on the fly, and that's fairly apt. In a way, it's kind of like the maneuver die concept that D&D 5th edition abandoned. Concerning Jutsu, I do like the dice pool system integrating with skill combos, just using Ki as one of the skills in this case. In addition, the Mold Ki action to temporarily increase your Yin or Yang Ki, alongside the Ki balance, is a nice alternative to a setup that you would assume would be MP-based. The Chakra system is a very intuitive setup, but the fiddliness is still there given the depth of actions. Now, the skill combo might be a bit of a culture shock, since most people have the attribute plus skill formula internalized, myself included. It's good, but there's going to be some relearning for some, especially if they got started on Wu Xing. It's always a tricky affair when a new edition opts for a brand new system. Even an overhaul of the old system can cause controversy. And while I liked the system in the first edition, this new game is akin to a refinement of the core ideas. Even so, it's going to be quite the jump between the two systems. Your mileage may vary on this change, but to me I find this a bit more intuitive and in a way a bit more accessible than Dynamic Game System was. Rough transitions aside, I am more than willing to give this game a stamp of strongly recommended. Those who like martial arts action and fighting anime, this is a must-have in your gaming library. As I said before, there will be some old habits that you might need to adjust to, but even that isn't quite enough to reduce the grade. Going from DGS to Chakra is certainly quite a leap, but with the depth of character customization in here, I think it warrants a look or two, especially since no two characters will be built the same way. I might use this for a future Characters with Characters segment.